Okay. Attention, folks. No, it, 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 I call this meeting to order at 7 p.m. If you would all please rise. Superintendent <coughs> Kathleen Murphy, would you please lead us at, and honor us with leading us in a pledge of allegiance? I would be honored. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you very much. <coughs> All right. I am, I am Stephen LaBranche. I am the chairman. I would like to ask the members of this committee to introduce themselves, starting with Ginny Bridal. Russell? Ginny Bridal, Russell, school board representative to the budget committee. Oh, uh, Jones. Timothy Citizen Jones. David Moore. Danielle Augustine. Thank you, Bush. Oh, Regina Barnes, Board of Selectmen Representative. Chuck Rage, representing the Hampton Beach Village District. Uh, Sonny Kravitz. Steve Henderson. Okay, and we have Barbara Kravitz at the end. She's our minutes recorder. Thank you very much. Now, before I start the public hearing on the SAU budget and the petition warrant articles, I want to begin with uh, someone making a motion so that we can allow non-citizens to speak when you come up to the microphone, of course, identify yourself and your address. But there are people here that are not voters, for instance, uh, employees of the town. And there may be people in the audience as well that wish to speak about something. So the- Mr. Oh, Chairman, I so move. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Okay, moved by Tim Jones, seconded by Regina. All those, is there any discussion about allowing non-citizens to speak at this meeting? No, this is this is. I'm talking to this group of people. With this Mr. Chairman, you did you did clarify that they would be identifying themselves as such in addition to the normal identification. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. All those in favor of allowing this? We have our own okay. Uh, uh, okay. Tim. Yes. Tim. Okay. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. All right. So, at this point. I will bring the public hearing to order at 7.03 p.m. for the SAU 90 budget and petition warrant articles. Mr. Chairman, I would move Article 1 to raise and appropriate as an operating budget $22,877,640. Do I have a second? And to be considered read as written. Second. All right. I'll second. Seconded by Regina. Moved by Ginny. Did you get that, Barbara? Yes. Okay. Any discussion on with this committee? Seeing none, you ready to vote? Those in favor, raise your hands. Okay. Um, Tim, are you? Are you okay, for we this? have. Are you Mr. Chairman, I'm in favor of opening it up for discussion. Yes. There you go. Discussion, Tim? I don't have any. A public hearing. Any, public any hearing. discussion from the public? I'm sorry. Questions, comments from the public regarding this Article 1? Seeing none. Okay, now we vote. Thank you, Tim. Vote. Mr. Those Chairman, I move to close discussion on Article 1. Oh, thank you. Okay. I'll second. All those in favor of closing discussion? Unanimous. Okay, Article 2. To see if the school board will vote to raise and appropriate $300,000 for long term maintenance. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Considered read as written. All right, thank you, Jenny. Uh, Mike Cliff, Mike Cliff seconded that. Um, I'll open this up to public discussion. Any discussion on Article 2? Good evening. Mary Louise Wolsey, 148 Little River Road. Um, I want to just reinforce the fact that I am very proud of this article. It has assisted the school system since 1986, maintaining the school buildings, and giving that little extra money to keep things running properly. And uh, I am uh, really proud to support this. 
Thank you very much. Anybody else with a comment, question regarding this article? Seeing none. <clears throat> Tim, are you going to make a motion to uh, end the discussion again? Mr. Chairman, I move that we close the public okay. hearing. Attention, folks. No, 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 no. I call this meeting to order at 7 p.m. If you would all please rise. Superintendent <coughs> Kathleen Murphy, would you please lead us at, and honor us with leading us in a pledge of allegiance? I would be honored. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. <coughs> all right. I am, I am Stephen LeBranch. I am the chairman. I would like to ask the members of this committee to introduce themselves, starting with Ginny Bridal. Okay. Russell? Ginny Bridal, Russell, school board representative to the budget committee. Oh, uh, Jones, Timothy Citizen Jones. David Moore. Danielle Augustine. Mike Walker. Oh, Regina Barnes, board selectman representative. Chuck Rage, representing the Hampton Beach Village District. Uh, Sonny Kravitz. Steve Henderson. Okay, and we have Barbara Kravitz at the end. She's our minutes recorder. Thank you very much. Now, before I start the public hearing on the SAU budget and the petition warrant articles, I want to begin with uh, someone making a motion so that we can allow non-citizens to speak. When you come up to the microphone, of course, identify yourself and your address. But there are people here that are not voters, for instance, uh, employees of the town. And there may be people in the audience as well that wish to speak about something. So the... Mr. Chairman, I so move. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Okay, moved by Tim Jones, seconded by Regina. All those, is there any discussion about allowing non-citizens to speak at this meeting? No, this is, this is, I'm talking to this group of people. With this Mr. Chairman, you did, you did clarify that they would be identifying themselves as such in addition to the normal identification? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, all those in favor of allowing this? We have our own okay. terminology. Okay. Uh, okay, Tim? Yes. Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you very much. All right, so at this point, I will bring the public hearing to order at 7.03 p.m., for the SAU 90 budget and petition warrant articles. Mr. Chairman, I would move Article 1 to raise and appropriate as an operating budget $22,877,640. Do I have a second? And to be considered read as written. Second. All right. I'll second. Seconded by Regina. Moved by Ginny. Did you get that, Barbara? Yes. Okay. Any discussion? On, with this committee, seeing none, you ready to vote? Those in favor, raise your hands. Okay. Um, Tim, are you? Are you okay, for we this? have. Are you Mr. Chairman, I'm in favor of opening it up for discussion. Yes. There you go. Discussion, Tim. I don't have any. Any, any discussion from the public? I'm sorry. Questions, comments from the public regarding this Article 1? Seeing none. Okay, now we vote. Thank you, Tim. Vote. Mr. Those Chairman, I move to close discussion on Article 1. Oh, thank you. Okay. I'll second. All those in favor of closing discussion? Unanimous. Okay, Article 2, to see if the school board will vote to raise and appropriate $300,000 for long-term maintenance. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Considered read as written. All right, thank you, Jenny. Uh, Mike Fluff, Mike Fluff seconded that. Um, I'll open this up to public discussion. Any discussion on Article 2? Good evening, Mary Louise Wolsey, 148 Little River Road. Um, I want to just reinforce the fact that I am very proud of this article. It has assisted the school system since 1986. 
maintaining the school buildings and giving that little extra money to keep things running properly. And uh, I am uh, really proud to support this. Thank you very much. Anybody else with a comment, question regarding this article? Seeing none. <clears throat> Tim, are you going to make a motion to uh, end the discussion again? Mr. Chairman, I move that we close the public hearing on Article 2. Second. Second. By Jenny. Second, Jenny Bridal. Jenny Bridal is a second. Tim was to make the motion. All those in favor, raise your hand, please. Tim, which way are you going? Consider my hand raised. Okay. An unanimous. Thank you. Article 3, to see if the school district will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $100,000 for the purpose of a second school resource officer to serve center school and Marston school in the district. Thank you. Jenny, do I have a second? To that? the public hearing. Okay, do I have second. a second? Second by Tim Jones. All right. Discussion from the public. Comments, questions about Article 3. Seeing none, um, Brian, you're going to have to get a chair. It's a chair right here. Is there one there, Bob? Okay. Um, seeing none. Mr. Chairman, I move to close the hearing on Article 3. <clears throat> Thank you, Tim. I second. Seconded by Jenny. Did you get that, Barbara? Yeah. All right. Article 4, to see if the school district will vote to raise and appropriate funds in the amount of $44,574 to provide child benefit services in accordance with RSA 188-49 for students who are residents of Hampton School District and attend Sacred High School located in Hampton, New Hampshire. Any second? To public hearing. Seconded by, second. Mike, seconded by Mike Bluff. Moved by Jenny Bridal. Any public discussion comments on... Article 4, seeing none. Mr. Yep. Chairman, I move that we close uh, the public hearing on SAU 90. Second. <clears throat> Seconded by Regina. The public hearing for the SAU 90 is now closed at 7.08 p.m. And I'm going to ask <clears throat> Channel 22 for a five-minute recess so that um, that we can sign the necessary DRA documents for the uh, state of New Hampshire. So a five-minute recess, please. Hearing. Oh, okay. We're going to have to wait. We're going to have to wait. It was Bill. Yeah. We didn't vote on that last article. And Tim made a motion to end the public meeting, and we had not voted on it. So in that case, I'm going to have to bring this meeting back to the public, to a public hearing again, so that we can properly vote on Article 4. Okay? We need to, we had a, a, a Mr. Motion. Chairman, all you need to do is call for a vote. That's, That's exactly what I'm going to do. I want to call for a vote right now. Those that are still sitting here, which ones? those in favor, please raise your hand. It's Sonny. Okay. Okay. Regina, you voting? The only person, Barbara. Sonny abstained. Everybody else voted yes. Okay. Now. Now, Tim, you want to make a motion to end the public hearing? I did that. That's what we just voted on. No, we voted on Article 4. No, because my motion voted. was. I know your motion was, but we need to 
vote. We need to have voted on Article 4. We didn't. And you made your motion to end the public hearing without us voting. So we just voted on Article 4. Okay. And now make a motion to end the public hearing. Mr. Chairman, I repeat my motion to terminate the public hearing on SA 90's warrant. Do I have a second on that? Second. Seconded by Ginny. Did you get that, Barbara? Now we will have a, we're done, the public hearing for the school is done. Vote and on. We will, please vote. Those to close. There we go, unanimous. All right. The meeting is, um, is public hearing. The, the public hearing is ended. We're going to do a five minute recess again so we can finish pa this paperwork and then we'll restart again, okay? Thank you very much for your patience. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, we're back to <coughs> the meeting, back to order, recess is over, papers are signed, and we're going to move on now to public hearing, we're going to open a public hearing for the Town of Hampton Budget and Petition mon mon Money Warrant Articles at 7.15 p.m., 
Thank you very much. So, just so that you know, there are 49 Warren articles. We only deal with the money Warren articles. And there are 30, was it 31, Tim? 30. 30 money Warren articles. So, Mr. We, Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, since we have a number of people here for the uh, flooding based Warren articles, May I suggest we do the flooding warrant articles first? Okay. Um, I have those already identified if you wish me to make the motions on those. All right, Tim. Um, but could the people that are here for the flooding from... Oh, there's a whole bunch. And let me, let me just ask you, are some of you um, residents, year-round residents, or some of you from, like, out of town, perhaps? Okay, so... Um, okay, and Massachusetts, perhaps... Taxpayers. Yeah. Taxpayers. Okay, but, but tax, taxpayers, they probably, they probably have to go to work tomorrow morning, yeah. correct? So for that reason, I think that it's a good idea um, to do what Tim recommended, which was, Tim? To uh, deal with the flood-related warrant articles first uh, and bring closure to them uh, so that they may relax. Okay. Um, there, and I'll be dealing with articles 20, 22, and forty-two. Okay. The um, flooding issues. I would I would point out I would point out to everyone that uh, you know, this this is a budget committee's public hearing, and we're here primarily to listen to you guys tell us why we're wrong, and give us an opportunity based on your wisdom to change our position. So if you already agree with our position, you may not need to or may not find a need to speak but certainly if someone is speaking against your position you may want to take the opportunity to rebut it okay so with that uh, i would move to public hearing article 20 uh one hundred thousand dollars to hire a consulting engineering firm uh to study the uh flooding at uh, hampton river hampton harbor and alongside wayside streets uh recommended by the board of selectmen five zip recommended by the budget committee Nine zip, and I'm sure that Jenny is ready to second. That. Second. Okay, Barbara, did you get that? She moved by second. moved by Tim. Article 20, seconded by Jenny. And I also just want to mention that I received a number of emails from perhaps you people, and um, in making your case <laughs> for the budget committee to please support the Warren articles, and just so that for the record that you can see, or maybe you didn't pick up the, the paperwork that was over on the table, you have the Warren articles. We are unanimous in supporting this, okay? The, the selectmen are unanimous in supporting this. Flooding is a very big issue that needs to come to the front, front of the, the front of uh, the, the, uh, the stove, and we have to- Mr. Chairman, can we hear from the public? <clears throat> I'm just explaining a little bit, Tim. So, having said that, we have a motion by Tim, seconded by Ginny. Any comments, questions from the public? And if you'd like to come up, you can speak at that podium. Yes. I mean, I have something to say, but I can, I'm, if you're in agreement, I guess you want me to say anything? Okay. Saying? No, no, I'm just suggesting that there's no detail. Right. Everyone, to the everyone is well, everyone's welcome to speak. West side of Ashland Avenue. Office. Okay, now could you please identify yourself? Hello. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah. Yeah, could you identify yourself with an address and sign a piece of paper for our secretary, Barbara, because you know that all these names she yeah. has to try to write them down and keep them in the minutes properly. So thank you very much, Barbara. Is that going to work for you? Okay, good. Hi, my name is Greg Pratt, and my wife Cindy is here as well. As well, uh, we live at well, we have a home at 60 Hobson. Uh, we pay taxes, but we don't vote in this community. And we're here representing a group that lives in the Brown Ave, Hobson Ave, Manchester Street area, basically the whole area west of Ashworth Ave. Property abutting the marsh. We're here to ask you to support the study of the study of town flooding issues and the King's Highway drainage warrant articles. As we all know, sea levels rise with 
will displace coastal populations, threaten infrastructure, and eventually the loss of property. Much of the current flooding is done in areas where people have second homes or vacation homes. So why would the people of Hampton really care if our second homes are lost to the sea? And these are people who already, most of them already have homes, so it's really not a big deal to them, I'm thinking, some of these people might think. We already have a place to live, so why should the taxpayers help save our property? And I can understand that argument until you look at the consequences. Uh, my wife and I live in New Hampshire, so we're paying property taxes on two homes. Our property taxes are high enough, and we don't want to spend any more money in taxes than we have to. But these second homes bring in a lot of tax dollars to the town of Hampton. Most of them don't send children to your schools. And six months out of the year, they just sit there paying three, four, five hundred dollars a month to the town and use zero services from the town during that time period. In fact, Hobson Ave has 26 homes, which contribute about $120,000, I estimated, to tax base per year, not counting the hotelty on the street. If you include Hamps, Hobson Ave, Manchester Street, Brown Ave area, you're talking it's up $750,000 a year of tax money coming in. And that's just a small area of the flood that we're talking about. When we talk about the other areas, um, we could be talking about millions of dollars. Um, as the sea level rise, unless we do something, I know we're not going to make any improvements to our home that we have here in Hampton, which we want to do, which means no extra money for the town of Hampton. I think there's others that feel the same way. And as sea level rise and continue to rise, our properties may even start to decrease, and we may be entitled to tax abatements at some point, causing Ham Hampton residents to pay even more in property taxes. And can you imagine the impact on taxpayers in Hampton if these properties lose 10, 20, 30 percent or more in their value? In fact, it's possible in the very near future some of these vacation homes could be relatively worthless. And that's something we as property owners and you as taxpayers don't want to happen. I just think we contribute a lot of money to the towns. We want to, I want to contribute more. I actually want my property to go up in value because I'll be making money on my property, and we want to make improvements to it. So it's the best interest of all of us to not have these homes you know, go down in value and to, to flood. So in the, best interest of the flooding in the best interest of the areas that flood regularly, the town of Hampton taxpayers, we ask you, here to, we ask you to support the town of Hampton flooding issues and the King's Highway Drainage Warrant article so we can all help solve this problem together. I think we're all in this together. And, that's what we're looking for. So I'm trying to get the angle that you know, we're all in this together. You know what I mean? And I just want to make a point that, you know, as I said, you know, the taxpayers, we don't want to pay any extra money and stuff like that. But you've got to kind of look at the big picture for all of us. And that's what I'm trying to get at. That's something in for all of us, not just for uh, the beach residents that are flooded. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any other? Good evening. Uh, Norman Sobertick, 70 Tide Mill Road, um, representing the rational taxpayers of Hampton. Um, we're not really opposed to this uh, article, but we are opposed to the concept of funding it from the undesignated fund balance. It's uh, really uh, a way of skirting and avoiding going to the voters and saying there's no tax impact, when in fact there really is a tax impact. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the merit of the, of the article. The flooding is a serious issue. It needs to be addressed. But it should be treated like any other Warren article. Come in front of the voters. The voters can vote on it. There is a tax impact to $100,000. And the concept of using undesignated fund balances is a, is a way of putting any and all kinds of projects that you don't want to have the voters vote on and trying to convince them there's no tax impact is misleading and disingenuous. And I don't think it's the proper way to go about doing business. In the past, the undesignated fund balance has been created by over-budgeting, so it always creates a surplus, and the town is supposed to maintain a surplus and not run into a deficit. And over the past few years, a portion of the surplus has been returned to the voters in the form of a abatement against the increases in the normal taxes that have uh, ta the ca tax spending that's in the current budget. But to start line-iting items, and uh, saying, let's use the money for this particular project or that particular project, to me, is a wrong process. That's my only point. Thank you. Mary Louise Wolsey, 148 Little River Road. Um, I agree with Norman, but I'll talk quicker. Um, I, I don't like the idea of the un uh, unassigned fund balance being used for things like this. No prejudice against this particular need, but I hope that people stop submitting articles that are tapping the unassigned fund balance. Uh, I don't think it's a problem for you at all, 
just asking the public to raise and appropriate. So I support what you're trying to do. I just have a little problem that unassigned fund balance stuff, you're dipping your hands in the fund balance, is uh, starting to get too uh, frequent. But good luck with it. I don't know whether anyone on the budget committee might want to um, change uh, or amend the wording in there, saying just, you know, raise and appropriate. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Jones. Uh, just to note that we have no authority to change the wording in any of these warrant articles. Thank you. I can't do what they're saying. I don't, you know, I don't know if you'd be open to that, but it might make it a little more uh, vote worthy uh, when the public goes into the ballot box. Hi, my name is Becca Bassett, and my family owns a home at 12 Jinshin Road. We're in the Meadow Pond area, and I'm here representing the, the neighborhood and residents of that area. Um, I, I uh, understand the concern um, of using uh, funds without a vote, but what I think is really important to remember is that this is a severe and urgent problem um, that has been going on for years. Uh, Ten years ago, when I was moving out of my college dorm, my mom picked me up and helped me move my stuff back uh, here to Hampton, and we literally couldn't get down the road. We had to get a motel room and a storage container to deal with all this stuff. So um, it's, it comes up on a whim when the rains are hard or the tides are high, and we literally can't get into our homes. Um, so uh, we're here to really encourage you to support the, the two articles, uh, to do so using this fund balance, uh, to not have further delay in finding a short-term and long-term solution. Um, and, and really urge you to, to go ahead and continue to support these articles. Thank you very much. Anybody else wish to speak on Article 20? Seeing none. Mr. Chairman, I move that we close the hearing on Article 20. Seconded by, Second. by Ginny Bridle. All those in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I might move to public hearing, Article 22, the sum of $80,000 to conduct an investigation and preliminary design for stormwater drainage for the Kings Highway, recommended by the Board of Selectmen and the Budget Committee unanimously. Seconded, moved by Tim Jones, seconded by Regina and Barbara. Note that the uh, on Article 20, Sonny abstained. Everybody else voted. Can, can I just, uh, Jones, move the motion? Regina seconded it. Yeah, on the prior. On the prior. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Any discussion from the public regarding Article 22? Seeing none. Mr. Chairman, I'll move to close <coughs> the public hearing on Article 22. Second. Seconded by Ginny. Moved by uh, Tim Jones, seconded by Ginny. All those in favor, please raise your hands. It's hard for me to see everybody here. Uh, it's yeah, unanimous. 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 Thank you very no. much. No. Wait a minute. Hold on. Did you One. say no? Okay. The no. nays. The nays, please May. raise. Okay, Brian Lapham is nay. Everybody else, Barbara was a yes. Okay, and there are no abstentions. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I may move Article 42 to public hearing. Forty-two. Raise $100,000. 42. That's the, uh, the grist mill? Yeah, to continue throwing money at the grist mill dam. And that's um, in, in your... In your <coughs> You're grouping that in with flooding. Um, because that was presented to us as a flood control issue at our last public, okay. uh, at our last budget committee meeting. Okay, that's. And that the, my motion will include that the article be considered read as written. And I would note that the Board of Selectmen voted, with only three members present, unanimously to, to recommend this. And the budget committee voted to recommend it 8 1 1. Okay. Second. Case okay, so made. Motion made by Tim, and it was seconded by Ginny. Yes. Okay. Um, anybody from the public wish to speak on this? Uh, what, what is the number of 
Article 42. Okay. My name is Norman Hurley, uh, 472 High Street. I am a resident. <laughs> um, I'm here to uh, ask for your support of Article 42. It's been an ongoing situation, though I don't necessarily believe it was presented as a flood uh, saving um, petition warrant last time. It was actually presented to help uh, save the Grismal building and dam uh, and, re and uh, rebuild it instead of uh, remove it. It does have benefits on flooding, and I will admit to that. We was presented last time that it may help with the, with the benefits of flooding, um, as we discussed last time. The uh, additional $100,000 is needed to complete the project. The project was originally uh, set up uh, and, and brought forth uh, back in 2014. Um, actually, the, the original designs were done in 2012, and that's where the, all the money was uh, actually set, set up for five different things that could have happened to that project. Uh, on 2014, they voted to, to remove the uh, dam. In 2015, we petitioned to have the dam rebuilt instead of removed, and we put the money in that was uh, stated in 2012. Up to this point, uh, the town has gone forth uh, with engineers that have gone much more extensive on the, um, on the planning end of it and the design end of it. Those designs and the plans are completed. The, all the uh, cores were done this time. Uh, the funding that is needed now is to complete the project. The, the plan was actually put out to bid, and the bids were opened on December, I believe, 1st, if I'm not correct. Uh, I believe it was December 1st, and the final monies were uh, set aside. We were contacted again. We've been working along with them all along. We were contacted again. They suggested that we put in a petition warrant article to complete the project. Uh, the state in 2012 had told the town that they are required to either remove or rebuild the dam or face substantial fines from the Department of Environmental Services in the state of New Hampshire. Uh, again, there was a, a host of things that happened between now and then. The funding was put forth in 2015, town meeting, Article 38, and uh, subsequently after all the planning, designing, and engineering, and bidding, it came in at, in today's money at approximately $100,000 more. So we're asking you to support uh, finishing the project. It is still the town's responsibility to do something at the dam. Uh, it was very well shown to us that regardless if they had taken the dam down or rebuilt it, that the ex uh, increased cost would have still been there for doing either project because the amount of work that was not done in the first bid or the first planning stages, the core work, uh, the cores of the uh, sediments and all that was not done until the project had moved forward. So we're asking you to support it. Um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Okay. Any questions from this committee? Seeing none. Thank you, Norm. One second. Once again, we're, we're doing the unassigned general fund balance as a way to tap uh, money to do these things. This has been dragging on since 2013 when the Stevens report was produced. Uh, 2014, uh, the Stevens report goes to 2013. Article 15 in 2014 wanted $400,000 to decommission the dam because of the Department of Environmental Services letter of deficiency. And that had a 331.18 lapse date. In 2015, Article 38 uh, asked to rescind the 400,000 and appropriate 650,000 with 400,000 from the fund balance once again. Uh, and uh, then Article 20 in 2016 uh, raising, to raise money for the outfall culvert. Uh, failed. 
We've got to get off the dime and do something about this. We've shifted from uh, replacing the dam, decommissioning the dam, doing a culvert, don't do a culvert. That's a heavily traveled area. We've got to do something about it. But I hope that if, if this passes, I hope it's definitive and somebody really truly gets around to getting the project done. Norman Silberdick again speaking for Rational Taxpayers. This project, we've been opposed to it for quite a while, and now it's the uh, additional cost to complete is uh, being uh, used again via the uh, undesignated fund balance, which we're totally opposed to. This is the third article, and I'm surprised there aren't more. We might as well put every money article through the undesignated fund balance. It's a bad precedent. If this p doesn't pass, which I don't know what will happen, but we're not going to recommend it. Perhaps the, uh, the proponents of it might consider a GoFundMe page since they're the ones who are going to benefit the most from it. Good evening. Uh, Chris Jacobs, uh, Director of Public Works for the Town of Hampton. Um, the department's been actively um, working with the People, there's a five-member committee for the Mill Pond Dam uh, restoration. Uh, we have been working with the state diligently. Um, this, the project, uh, Norm Hurley was correct. Uh, this project has been put out to bid. The bids came in November, uh, December 1st. We received more than three, which is historic for, for a number of the projects that we put out. Um, we've got a, what I would consider a good contractor, a decent and fair price through the bid process. I'm concerned that if it doesn't get voted affirmatively, that for one, we'll lose the, well, all the money that was spent on the preliminary engineering report. We'll lose all the money that we've invested, well over 100000 now, for the final design and the permitting and the bidding process. And um, we'll actually take a step backwards. We're very close to seeing this project done and completed. It will provide, while not a tremendous amount, but it will provide some stormwater management and help out the people in the, the Meadow Pond neighborhood, i.e. those adjacent to Kings Highway, Green, Jensen Streets. So it is a valuable project. It's a worthwhile project to get involved with and support. Uh, in the end, um, I think you're going to be very pleased with uh, the construction when it gets done, the aesthetics that you can see from High Street, the, uh, the natural uh, facade of the dam will remain. The new dam is going to be built behind it, and uh, it will be a very pleasant area. Uh, it's still going to be the responsibility of the town to uh, own and maintain, and uh, I, don't, I haven't had anything to the contrary telling me that it won't be open uh, as it currently is to public access. So it's, it's a well and valued uh, project and uh, I would urge you to support it and uh, to so that we can wrap this up and get something done. Thank you. May I ask Chris a question? Yes, you may. That's what this is a public hearing for. I, as a 54-year resident of Hampton, I'm, I'm not just talking about the gristmill dam by itself. That culvert has got to be replaced, enlarged, improved, or something. Is that going to be factored in? No. <gasps> Chris. The current dam, flow through the dam won't dramatically increase, but it won't dramatically decrease. Uh, the um, town spoke before uh, when it came to uh, adding another section to the project, i.e. coming out to High Street and replacing the culverts, um, was deemed in a prior vote not necessary at that time. Again, um, I'm always fearful for projects snowballing, like while we're replacing the dam, let's rebuild High Street, let's dredge Meadow Pond, let's resurface Route 1A, you know, things keeping going. This is a defined project, has defined benefits. Um, let's vote it in, let's get it done. Uh, in future years, we can prioritize the High Street culverts and uh, get that work done uh, at another time, another project. But it, probably it would be best to do the High Street culverts after we know what the solution is to the green uh, Kings Highway, Jensen neighborhood 
uh, drainage issues. So all projects in, in, a, in a good orderly fashion, one uh, building on top of another. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I may ask a question. Chris. Yeah. Uh, Chris, you said you had bids? Yes, we do. We have, we have three bids, and the bidders have all agreed to uh, hold their bids as uh, open or, or uh, stable bids until the, I think it's the several days after the town election, town vote. And does that mean that you don't know what the dollar amount is on the Oh, board? I do, but not off the top of my head. It's not one piece of, it's not the piece of information I, that I brought with me tonight. Are they all under the requested 100000 Well, we have 535 remaining in that account, I believe, and you're asking for another 100000 That makes it uh, 635000 so are they all coming under 635000 No. There was one bid that, that came in, um, taking their bid with the money that was remaining, left us somewhere around 75000 80000 short. Uh, in discussing it with the engineers, they suggested that we add in more inspection time and more monitoring time because of the way the bid came in. And also, we, the, the project is out. Um, Jennifer could enlighten me as to whether all the permits are back, but I know it's through the Wetlands Bureau process. It's all been submitted, been reviewed and questioned once. So, yeah, at this moment in time, I don't even have a wetlands permit to do the work. And so what I'm hearing, I heard that word short. Short? Yeah, I heard you say short. Short of not enough money still. Correct. The, the low bid and, with and the money that's remaining, we are short. There, and I asked you whether or not the bids came in under 635000 and you said no, one of them was short. Let me be clear. Okay. 635, 219,000 of that was spent on engineering, or will be spent on engineering well, on this particular you go to, project. You go further, let me so make that only point. leaves 400 some. No, so no, if no, 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 Chris. We have we have appropriated first 400,000, then 250,000, and now you want another 100,000. That's a total of 750,000. I asked Christy at the last public hearing how much is remaining in the account based on the 650 we've already appropriated. Her response was, we have 535,000 remaining. So with that 535 and you add another 100,000, that gives you 635. And you're telling me the bid, you have bids that are not coming in below that. Is that correct? I don't have the information, so I'm not going right. to answer your question because it'll just go round and round. That's fine. Now, you also mentioned, <laughs> you also mentioned engineering uh, studies that you had. And uh, we don't see those engineering studies. Yeah. Right, because you see, this is all just one big black money hole. We cannot get straight answers in terms of what, what, when it's going to get done, how much it's going to cost. Where's the engineering studies? All right, just walk away. Okay. We have walk away. Question. That's fine. I have no problem with that. Is there anyone else that wants to speak from the public? Otherwise, I'd like to close this one article. And, and get this nightmare over with. Please, Norm, if you would. I would like to readdress a little bit of what he just said. Say, the hundred thousand dollars will be more than sufficient to finish the project with the money we currently have and currently have spent. Hey, the engineering projects are, done, are, are, are the engineering stuff is all done. Hey, uh, we've met with them. We've been working with them. We've been working with the DPW. We're working with. I believe it's PARE uh, Engineering, who's put out the project to bid. There were eight actual bids that came back. Several were well above the money we were to be able to, if, if we asked for this extra 100000 I believe at least two were under the money that would be needed if we asked for this extra 100000 So what we're asking to do is finish the project, spend the $100,000 to finish the project, or you lose the money that was already spent, because that money will lapse, and we'll have to still finish the project because the state still mandates to get the project done. The state is the one who's mandated that we do something to begin with. And you'll have to, it, the money, the, the question from Mr. Silverdeck about the $400,000 that came from, from the uh, fund balance was the 400000 that was originally raised the year before. So we took that, recaptured it, and then raised an additional two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We made that very clear in the Warren article so that we weren't hiding a thing. 
We're trying to make sure everybody's aware of what we're doing. We're trying to make sure everybody's aware of what we're doing now as well. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and I think that Norman answered your question, Tim. Two of the bids came in under, so there is enough money. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. The question was directed to the DBW director, an, an official in this town, the one that's going to be supervising the work. And he told you he didn't have And he that, walked away. He didn't have, he told you he didn't no, have No, he didn't have the numbers regarding the dollar numbers. When I asked about the engineering study, he just walked away. That's an entirely different matter entirely. So, no, my questions have not been answered. And as far as Mr. Hurley, I love Norm Hurley. He and I enjoy each other's company immensely. Do we not, Norm? However, I will point out that, you know, a few years ago when he came in asking for an additional $250,000 in addition to capturing the so-called lapse of money from the $400,000 Warren article, he was assuring us that there would be more than enough to repair the dam because there are a number of options to do the repair that would come under less than that. And so here we are. Now, okay, Tim, Tim, please. Tim. Norm's estimates, I can't. Tim, excuse Tim, me, Mr. Chairman. We have another person that wishes to speak from the public. You, you reminded me before that this isn't about us talking. During this public hearing, we're here to listen to the people. I agree. Chris, I was responding to Chris you, Mr. Has Chairman. Point, all right. Chris has returned to the microphone. Okay. Will he, will he now identify himself as a non-citizen? Chris, if you would, please. Chris Jacobs, Director of Public Works of the Town of Hampton. The three bids that we received uh, are as follows. RC and D Inc. was the low bidder, four hundred and ninety-six thousand eight hundred and fifteen dollars. The second lowest bid was from Ken it reads Kenny Fick Corporation, five thirty-seven eight seventy-five, no cents. Uh, so, and then reading further down, Sumco. Eco contracting bid five seventeen six fourteen um, total. There were one two three four five other bids, um, all substantially higher. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the engineering study I asked about. Can I make a motion to close the discussion of this article. We have a motion to I close. Second it. Seconded by Regina. All those in favor of closing this discussion, raise your hands. We have <coughs> we have Ginny and we it's have. It's unanimous down here. It's unanimous. it's unanimous, and it's unanimous up there as well. Thank Mr. You Chairman, much. if I I would like to make a motion to reconsider my vote uh, on Article 42. Can I get a second, please. Second. I second. Thank you. Okay, we, we have a motion to reconsider, Barbara, by Tim Jones. He wants to reconsider his vote, seconded by Ginny. Um, the discussion right now will be restricted to whether we are going to, um, we have the motion, restrict the conversation to um, reconsideration, not the article itself. Okay. Relax. We've closed the public hearing. Relax. No, we know what we're I doing. Mr. Chairman, we no longer in public hearing, correct? We are going to recess out of the public hearing at 949 in order to discuss this as the budget committee. Eight, 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 forty-nine, eight, forty-nine. Oh, I'm sorry, seven. I'm sorry, seven forty-nine. Okay, I'm looking right at my at the because clock we want there. we want to bring closure on all of the flood-related warrant articles, as we said earlier. Okay. Yes, we can. We I can I can do that, right. and I'm doing it right now. So we are going to close the recess, not close recess, the public hearing. And then we are going to discuss these three uh, flood issues if anybody wishes to reconsider their votes so that we can conclude completely on these three articles so that this group of people that came here special for this from out of town will be able to go home. After we do that, we will go back to the public hearing and we will continue on with the rest of the Warren articles. So, okay, we have uh, Sonny wants to move the question. So, those in favor of reconsidering, which, what was your motion again, Tim? 
I move to allow me to change my vote on Article 42. Okay. A motion to reconsider. And, and Sonny, uh, and who, who seconded that? Ginny. Ginny seconded it. Sonny just moved to vote. So those in favor of reconsideration, please raise your hands. Ginny Bridal. <laughs> Mr. Kravis moved that we, we take the, the vote. Okay, we don't need a second on that because it's not a motion, it's just asking to, to move it. So, those in favor of reconsidering the Article 42, please raise your hands. We have Ginny and Tim Jones and David and Danielle and Mike Plouffe and how many is that? One, two, three, four, five. I'll make it six just to just so that we can then discuss. I just did. Okay. So you have Ginny, Tim Jones, Dave Moore, Danielle, and myself. Those uh, in the nay, please raise your hands. Chuck, Regina, Steve Henderson, and Brian Lapham, and Sonny Kravitz. No, those were the nays. Six and five. Six and five. Six and five. So you have the nays are Regina, Chuck, Sonny, Steve Henderson, and uh, Brian Lapham. Yes, Sonny. If you recall the last meeting, anybody who voted against can ask for reconsideration. The in order to reconsider, it has to be. They have, it has to be made and seconded by somebody that voted in the affirmative, which in this case, both people voted in the affirmative. So we can reconsider this, okay? So having said that, Tim? I suppose it would be appropriate now for me to move Article 42. Can't hear you. Now? Now? Does that? Hello, Speak up. You don't need a microphone. So I'll move uh, Article 42. Uh, in terms of our tally vote and how it's reflected on the warrant. Is there a second to that? I second it. Seconded by David Moy. Mr. Chairman, as you recall, there was a lot of discussion at our Tuesday night budget committee uh, meeting on the on this dam, also known as the Dam Dam. <laughs> and uh, as I pointed out and others who were initially reticent to vote in favor of this, This was the first time that it was presented to us as a flood control issue, a water management issue. And tonight, the advocates put it back onto the table as a beautification issue. And the flood control question seemed to like, well, it's very minimal. And I've received a number of communications from people who are not present here tonight chiding me for a variety of things. But one of those things was uh, the citation they made about the so-called Stevens report that was done in 2013 and the fact that I allowed my vote to be swayed without seeing the more recent engineering reports, which is why I was asking uh, for those reports. And you can see the response I got. Just turn your back on us and tell us, you know, believe what we say. You don't have a right to read the engineering reports, just do what we tell you to do kind of attitude. And I read the Stevens report, and the Stevens report from 2013, an engineering firm, I might add, indicated that the flood control uh, capacity of that dam was extremely minimal. And it did not accommodate even the so-called 100-year flood. It was only marginally covering the 50-year flood The culvert is well undersized to accommodate 
uh, water flows from either the 50 or 100 year flood. And it appears to me on reading that report that whether the dam is there or not, it's the culvert, that hole under the, under the road that lets the water flow into Meadow Pond, the marshland if you prefer. It's that hole, the size of that hole that really matters, not the existence or the beautification of the dam relative to flood control. And so that, for that reason, I, I, I have to, uh, and I thank the committee for allowing me the opportunity to reconsider, to uh, cast a negative vote on this. And I would encourage others to join me on this because, to me, we just keep throwing money after money after money on this and never seem to be getting anywhere. And even when we do with the existing plan, it's still not going to be adequate flood control. But culvert, it seems to be the key. And we're not addressing it at all. As you heard the DPW director, it's not even on the table. It was on the table years ago. But now it seems to be entirely, let's keep the beautiful pond from my backyard or front yard view. It's not adequate public policy thinking. It may be adequate for my neighborhood if I want to keep my pond and my pretty view. It's adequate for me personally, yes. But as good public policy, it ain't. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You are certainly most welcome. Anybody else on this committee wishing to speak about this? Seeing none. <clears throat> this has been going around and around for a long time. Back in uh, the Warren article for 2014, there were actually two articles. Article 15 was to appropriate the $400,000 for the purpose of decommissioning. And Article 16, was there was 235,000 for the purpose of replacing the culverts on High Street. And at the time, there was some money available um, from the state, and the article was contingent upon receiving that money. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, the... Mm -hmm. We didn't get it. Well, right. I, I think, if I remember correctly, that the warrant article uh, asking to replace the culverts was approved, but the money wasn't there. So, of course, being contingent upon getting that $147,500, it never happened. Um, but having looked into this and having been on this board all of the time that this thing has been going around and around, um, and back when we talked about it thoroughly in... Um, 2015 when the private petition from Norm Hurley and others um, wanted to repair the dam for $650,000 um, and the, the thing that was used to um, the in information we had at the time was the engineering study from the Stevens report and there were I read this and I think that that was in 2013. Um, of course, now, with money having been spent um, nowadays in, a, in engineering done um, and an actual cost, um, this is a shovel-ready project. Uh, everything's ready to go. It's just a matter of getting that additional money um, from the from the uh, the place that Nam. Silberdick doesn't like, where was it, the un unexpended appropriations. Um, having said that, um, any, other, any other comments on this? Because if there are none, then we're going to, I'm going to ask for a vote. Um, this originally on Tuesday night passed. Um, it was eight in favor, one against, and one abstention. So at this time, I'm going to ask, we have a full board here. We have 11 members, and so we need six in order to, for this to pass, or six for it to fail. So at this time, those in favor of um, recommending this Warren Article 42, please raise your hands. I have Steve Henderson, Sonny Kravitz, Chuck Rage, Regina, not in favor any longer? Not Oh, okay. Uh, Mike Plouffe is in favor, Danielle, and 
Ginny, does that make six? I believe. Sonny, you voted yes. Cool. So that's six. Okay, and I'll make it seven. So you have seven. It's it's going to be seven. Those in th those against this article, please. Tim Jones and David Moyer and Brian Lapham and any abstentions. Regina. Regina is abstaining. Okay, so you have uh, Tim, David, and Brian that are in the nay. You had seven yeses and one abstention, Barbara. Okay, thank you very much. At this time, um, that takes care of the quote unquote flooding issues. So at this time. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, I think that uh, we can assume that no one spoke on 22 and all of the responses on 20 were either favorable or not negative toward the substance of the article. So I assume there'll be no desire for reconsideration. So I move that we thank these wonderful people for coming in and telling us about the flooding issues uh, and raising it to the, uh, the ballot and uh, that we uh, let them know that we're bringing closure to this. So I move that Articles 20, 22, and 42 be closed for further consideration for the evening. Do I have a second? Seconded by Regina that these three warrant articles will not be reconsidered. That way you people can go home and not worry about it changing. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, we're going to vote, vote on that, please. Can we have a vote? Those in favor, and it's unanimous, thank you very much for coming in. Okay, we support you, okay? Um, at this time, okay, thank you very, thank you for coming in, okay, thank you for coming in. Okay, at this time, at 8.02, you're welcome, bye now. At 8.02 p.m., we will, re we'll, we will restart the public hearing for the Town of Hampton's budget and petition mo money warrant articles. So, now that we're back with our public hearing, do I have a motion from somebody, Tim? I don't know. Maybe. I'll make a motion. Okay, make a motion, please, on the next money warrant article. Yeah. I will make a motion that the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of. Thirteen million eight hundred eighty thousand. Which article are you doing? Article seven. 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 For the purposes of constructing the necessary upgrades and making improvements to the wastewater treatment plant, as follows: headworks upgrades, aeration, aeration <coughs> tank upgrade, primary clarifier, number one upgrade, gravity thickener, number one upgrade, plant water system upgrade, primary sludge pump upgrade, thickened article sludge seven. transfer yeah. pump waste, replacement, waste. polymorph system upgrade, sep. Septage handling improvements, operation building improvements, maintenance garage improvements, and SCADA system improvements. SCADA. 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 Such sum to be raised by the issuance of municipal bonds or notes for a period not to exceed 30 years under and in accordance with the Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33. And to authorize the Board of Selectmen and the Town Treasurer to issue and negotiate such bonds or notes and to determine the rate of interest there on in accordance with the Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33. And to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for, contract for, accept and expend any federal, state, or other unavailable available funds towards the project in accordance with the terms and conditions under which they are received and to borrow in anticipation of the receipt of such funds and or the issuance of such bonds or notes as provided in the Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33, and to authorize participation in the State Evolving Fund, SRF, RSA 486, colon 14, established for the purpose and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for, accept and expend such monies as they become available from the federal and state governments, and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to implement such cost-effective solutions as are presented in the future that they deem to be in the best interest of the town that may result in a lesser amount of expenditure than is authorized by this Warren article, and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to take any and all actions necessary to carry out the project in the best interest of the town of Hampton. Three-fifths vote required, recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 400, recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, 801. 
fiscal note Im impact note finance department since the above bond would not be issued until later in 2018 or even 2019 the first estimated principal interest payment of 770,500 will not occur until late in 2019 the estimated 2019 tax rate impact is 0.232 per 1000 valuation the total of the bond's principal and interest payments over a 30-year period at an interest rate of 2.25% are estimated to be $18,612,750. Do I have a second on that, please? I'll second. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Point of order. I believe this uh, tally from the Budget Committee is incorrect. It's got zero nays on it. And I know it's incorrect because I voted nay. Barbara, do you have um, notes on that? When did you vote on that, Tim? I voted on it with everyone else, and I can tell you that I know, and I have the video on it, that Dave voted in abstention solo, I voted nay solo, and everyone else went with the herd. Nineteenth of December. I don't know if I've got those. Do you have the minutes from nineteenth of December, Barbara? Yeah. All right. Take your time. So, Tim, what are you suggesting the numbers should be? I know the last two are one one. So it would be seven one one. I don't know how many people are at that meeting, so I cannot tell you what the yeas were, because they just they were just a group of people going along to get along. I do know that Dave decided he wasn't certain enough to vote either way, and he did an abstention, which surprised me. Okay, hold and on. And I do know that, once again, I found myself doing Thank the right you, thing Tim. by myself. Thank you, Tim. Barbara, please. I would confirm that Mr. Jones voted against. Okay, so it should be 7-1-1. Thank you, Tim. In, in one abstention? Who was the abstention? I, I abstained. Okay, oh, no, Regina. No, no, no. David abstained. So Tim voted no, David abstained. So we have 7 1 1. <clears throat> How many yeses do you have, Barbara? Is it 7? Okay, thank you very much, Barbara. Thank and you, I, Tim. I would correct the I would correct the minutes to show Mr. Moore on as extension. Yes, please. Thank you very much. So this needs to be corrected to on Article seven to say that recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee seven one one. Okay, thank you very much for making that observation, Tim. Now we had who made the motion on this? Regina, Regina made a motion. Do you have a second? Oh, Chuck made the second. Okay. Any other um, any comment from the public? Mayor Louise. Thank you for waking me up. Yeah, um, that's okay. I'm going to address this in gra at greater length uh, at the bond hearing next week. But uh, I have a couple of questions here. You've mentioned a 2.25% interest. Uh, the school got a really good interest rate on the renovation bond, and that was 3.15. Do you have any idea where 2.25 came from? That's pretty low. Are you asking me? Well, I'm asking, asking anybody who person. can answer. Okay. You're asking the wrong person. I don't know who did the bonding. Rusty, do you have the a clue? number came from the finance director, Mr. Chairman. Oh, maybe Christy can help. Let me get out of your way. I used the rates that were from the June bond sale for the bond bank and just took an average between what the rates were for the um, 15, 20, and 25 year and came up with that average of 2.25. And I can tell 
the committee that yesterday we were in the bond sale for the Lafayette Road and we did get 2.16. Thank you very much, Christy. So, so when it comes time to going out and getting the bond, the rate may change. Absolutely. Right, okay. That, so That helps. Um, now, my other question is revenue. Offsetting revenue. You, the board has not yet assessed an industrial surcharge fee, and I hadn't even heard of it until I read the Wright Pierce report. Why are we not discussing that? You do have, in a subsequent article, the enterprise fee to take a look at and study. That's going to that's going to mean reconfiguring part of the um, the actual tax calculation. But there it is, Article 28. When you get to that. But wh where are the fees for these big users? We're bringing people in from out of town. We have three major industrial operators here, and I don't ever recall anyone talking about imposing an industrial surcharge fee. And frankly, we're losing revenue. And I think the public, in a, in a project this size, and it's supposedly there are going to be two more bonds, uh, I'm a little surprised at the 30-year, but the whole total is projected to be $41 million over whatever period of time you're, you're dragging this out. But what, what are the selectmen doing about, about in the industrial surcharge fee, Brazonix and Smutty Nose and FOSS? And that's been in place. That's, okay. that's referenced. Uh, Smutty Nose came yeah. online in 2014. What are we doing here? You're hoping that you might get something, apply for, accept, and expend such monies as they may become available from federal and state governments. Don't hold your breath. I, I have a serious concern about the way this stuff is being handled. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Jerry? Jerry Zeno here, 16 Presidential Circle. <clears throat> One of my favorite subjects, wastewater treatment plant, which I worked in in 010, 011, and 012 as a selectman's rep. Anyway, here comes the Wright Pierce report, which I read several times. It's very good. A very good report. I think it achieves. I mean, it, it's front to back. I think it's very accurate. It certainly identifies those things that need to be taken care of, replaced. Uh, they even prioritize these items. Unfortunately, <laughs> they didn't cover any of the pump stations. And there's 15 of those. Uh, Church Street is brand new, so I don't think there's any problems there. But we could have a pump station that's about ready to give up the ghost in terms of antiqua be antiquated and have aging equipment and equipment ready to be replaced and failing or being held together by rubber bands and chewing gums, and it would be into phase one, I would think, and yet we didn't, we didn't look at the pump stations. I would have done it. It would have been part of the charter. So I consider it somewhat incomplete that report. It's not their fault. They were probably actioned with the wastewater plant, not the pump stations, <clears throat> which I think is a miss. Um, I've, I've given this a lot of thought. I've been over it a few times, read it, the graphs and the charts. Very good report. And I'm going to, I'm going to eliminate a lot of the things that I'm not going to repeat what they have recommended, but they have recommended quite a few things. And they kept saying that these things should be done now, right now. Get them done now before any upgrade occurs. This is what I'm going to talk a little bit about. The first thing I want to talk about is the need for aeration. You know, if you look at Table 2 1 on page 2-2, two, two. the state should be requiring to review all sewer permits right now. 
because our daily, average daily output exceeds the design limit of 80%. I'm surprised they're not coming down on us. I really am. It's pretty clear to me. We're exceeding it. We're over 80% for the BOS and the total suspended solids. The flow is not a problem. Three and a half million gallons, whatever, that's not a problem. It's the pollutants that are coming in. Problem started in May of 2014 with these pollutants. Right, Pierce was advised that a new industrial supplier had come online in March of 14. The brewery. We experienced a sudden increase of 10 to 40 percent in the influent load in May. The initial increases in the load was approximately two to three thousand pounds of BOD, biological oxygen demand, per day. An increase of 75% from pre brewery influent levels. Town has indicated that more recently in 016, the local brewery modified their waste disposal program to decrease their solids and their sewage. Analysis of 216 by Wright Pierce indicates that the influent BOD concentrations are still between 1,000 and 2,000 greater than the wastewater treatment loading prior to brewery connection. That's pounds. Based on existing design capacity, the brewery may be contributing anywhere from 10 to 40 percent of the wastewater treatment overall pollutant load capacity. The brewery is significant, has a significant contributor to both the BOD and TSS pollutant loads to the plant. And the reason that we're exceeding design limitations right now. I suggest that perhaps the brewery should be made the one that finances the needed increase in aeration instead of the Hampton taxpayers. One can say it's quite a buy for them to pay for their taxes approximately 120000 a year while we foot a $6.6 .6 million bill to accommodate their flow. Are we addressing the right audience? Now, I looked at 17. I, I tried to find 17 data. And... Uh, I found seven. I found it in the waste uh, in the uh, Wright Pierce uh, selectman's presentation they made with their PowerPoint. Can't find it right here. Thumbing through here, all the stuff that I have. And the problem is, it's got 17 plot points, but in the middle of the chart, there's a big block of data, blocking out all my points. So I can't see 017. So I can't see really how we did in 017. That bothers me, and I look at that with suspicion. Here they give me a chart, and I can't read it because they blocked the whole middle part of the chart out with some data. In any case, I don't have 017, and we got a problem. Okay, and I'm <laughs> surprised the state hasn't stepped in already, quite frankly. Now, on top of that, Wright Pierce has recommended we look at our sewer ordinance, 406, and review all the sewer fees for the potential of establishing or increasing them. And there's a host of them, including entrance extens entrances and extensions and state billing rates and septage billing rates, and camper and RVs and wastewater development charges, all of which, you know, can be reviewed. Establish penalties and surcharges for industrial suppliers who violate the user agreements. I don't think we have that today. They couldn't find it. They said there wasn't any. Establish penalties for the sewer violations stipulated in Ordinance 406-6, paragraphs A through G. A lot of sewer violations are in there. No penalties are stipulated. And so on. 406-7, <laughs> establish a penalty for any person found guilty of damaging sewer structures. We should update this required document now, before upgrade. We don't have to wait. Control of industrial suppliers. Thoroughly review all new requests for future development that comes through the planning board. 
for flow and load impact. We got a hotel going up. We got a assisted living with an Alzheimer's uh, addition. And I heard through the zoning board the other night, we got maybe 40 or 50 houses going in over on Timber Swamp Road and Mary Beth Highway. We better be on our toes and leaning forward. Because it could get a lot worse. These wastewater controls must be agreed upon at this step before acceptance. No permit to operate without it. Should contain what we want for limitations and a surcharge should they violate it. And a good sized one. Once in operation, the supplier agreed upon controls must be monitored by the town DPW, wastewater treatment plant personnel, and at set schedules, get in there. They may increase or decrease those schedules depending on the flow results from any particular supplier. Here are some of the things you should be looking for. Is the supplier sampling the wastewater leaving their premise to the agreed upon frequency? We need objective evidence. Where are the records? Do the sampling results verify the adherence to the user agreement? Do the sampling results correlate with the town analysis? Are pretreatment protocols being adhered to before and before release to the wastewater treatment plant? Is the required user reporting occurring? Surcharges, per ordinance, or user agreements are required. We are to establish procedural and policy controls now. Do not wait for the sewer upgrade. The sewer permit is five years old. It's expired by five years, more than five years, five and a half. Petition the state to restore the permit to the original design requirements of the plant based on the right peers capacity analysis and their recommendations to do so several times through the report. It will increase not only the millions of gallons a day we can receive, but will also give us more headroom in the T total at TSS and the BOD. Do it. This would give us immediate relief to the BOD and TSS specification limits and allow more headroom and margin for planning purposes. What is the status of this permit? Why the delay? The new permit very well may require metals reduction, copper, aluminum. It's not unusual. I was in a Billerica plant a few years ago. They were taking copper out. It's a special process and costs more money, capital-wise. It's a big, big drum. It's magnetic. Fred was with me, I believe. Maybe not. I know I had a couple of guys, Doobie and Aslan. This, if this is the case, boy, that would really throw our phase one, phase two, phase three thing out of, out of kilter. So I don't know why we're holding back. It's going to require, it would require, it would require real capital monies to fix that problem. And it might require a, an implementation date as well. Now here comes the taxpayer who was voted for 13.9 <laughs> phase one. And here we got to do an upgrade because of the uh, permit. And have that ready in 219 maybe. That's not so good. So we ought to go after it, be assertive, be aggressive. Let's find out. This risk needs to be addressed. Septage controls. On average, we take in a million and a half gallons a year of septage is taken in at the wastewater treatment plant. Rice, and I was, I, I was there when they were delivering. Wright Pierce recommends that during the summer months, they pull back. We pull back on the deliveries to compensate for the load we're going to get in from the beach. Sounds like the right thing to do. Let's do it for those three or four months, May, June, July, August, whatever, September through the festival. Oh, in addition, and here's key, validate that the gallons he's bringing in is what the gallons he says he's bringing in. In other words, I, I understand it, that the guy goes to the trucker, goes to the town office and he pays the bill. He says, I'm bringing in 7,000 gallons or whatever. Who's validating that? Who is validating what he's delivering? I didn't see any validation when I was in the plant. That can be done if the guy's got a calibrated gauge at the side of his truck 
Or he's got the truck pre-weighed and then wait again. But we got to do it. These are controls that are lacking that would contribute to revenue and, and better running of the, of the wastewater treatment plant. Rake-off procedures need to be verified. I understand. I think I understand that when they dump out, they might have, who knows, diapers, rubber wraps, whatever piled in there that they sucked out of a septic tank. That should be raked off ahead of time by them, I was told. If so, let's document and hold their feet to the fire. Cost recommendations. $34.87 million project in three phases. These are planning level costs, quote, unquote. Developed using standard cost estimating procedures with industry standards. It makes nothing to me. Total project costs include an allowance of 30% of the estimated construction cost to account for contingencies. That's very high in my opinion, extremely high. This author feels that sufficient cost details are missing to make the estimate believable and a 30% contingency is significantly above industry average. Did suppliers get called? Who were they? What did they quote? Do we have objective evidence of their contacts? Do we know what a 339,000 gallon aeration tank cost and their associated needed plumbing? Aeration makes up 6.6 .6 million of this first phase. Total cost of 16 point or 13.8 million. Who did we speak to? to lend validity to these cost figures. How much work went into the costing of pumps or motors? That's a piece of cake. Pick up the phone, call industrial suppliers, call manufacturers with people who readily supply them, like industrial suppliers or the manufacturers. Did we do any work there? I didn't hear any of that. We need to be convinced that enough due diligence went into the cost estimating to make them believable. Right now, I don't feel so good. Planning. A question was asked of the DPW director at a recent budget committee meeting. If a project plan had been developed, the response was no. That would it be developed after the vote. Another question followed to the DPW director as to how long it would take to complete the project. The response was, I don't know. Sometimes later in the meeting, the director offered some rationale to his initial answer, but you might say it was a little too late. Such responses do not give me a good feeling as a taxpayer. Summary. The question of industrial pollutants that affect the plant and the role of the supplier who's doing it in the aeration requirement needs driven needs to be responded to. Under created the problem. Got to participate in the solution here. Review and potential increases of sewer fees, as I just went over, need to review. The creation of a policy on industrial surcharges. The septage policy changes for control. Procedures for the control of industrial users. No status on 15 pump stations. Create a documented plan for infiltration and inflow. Tell me what you're going to do and when. Expedite new sewer permit as the current one is five years past due, and who knows about metal removals. Petition the state for the original design ca capacity limitations for Wright Pierce's capacity analysis and their recommendations to do so. Let's give ourselves more headroom. Let's go after them. No detailed project plan. Cost, est cost, est cost estimates at this time look suspicious to me, and many action items in need of work as described. Taxpayers need to witness action on all these items mentioned on preceding pages. Words like, we plan to do it, don't wash. Quite frankly, they don't wash. Given all that has been said, this author cannot support this project or this warrant at this time. 
essentially without a project plan or costs that are well grounded and with the many questions, concerns, and we needed actions that have been stipulated, I pass at this time. But I will be listening, studying and analyzing. By the way, I looked at that chart and that graph starting with the year 14, 15, 16, I couldn't see 17, and there were many points driven out of control with BOD, the biological oxygen demand, and TTS. And we never before happened to us. In summer months it went up for three months, but it never crossed the minimum design line. We've been crossing that line since 14, thanks to an industrial supplier, or more than perhaps one. And I say to myself, what happens when that hotel comes online, and what happens when those houses get built, and what happens when that uh, Alzheimer's facility with assisted living comes on? I mean, God, I hope we're on the balls of our feet and leaning forward when these things come through. I would be. They wouldn't like me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Any other comments, questions? Regarding Article 7, Norm Soberdick speaking again for Rational Taxpayers of Hampton. There is a um, history on capital projects of uh, fundamentally taking the ideal approach to a project and not the most practical one. And in the past, we had a fire station that was projected to be seven and a half million. It came in at 5.8. The Church Street Pump Station was projected at 8 million, improved at 4.8, and came in at 3.8. The salt shed, which was turned down several times at 200,000, came in at 150 and sewer pipes, sewer pipe issue across the marsh project for 4.2 million and the total cost to repair it was approximately under $500,000. So is the ideal solution the best solution? And part of what we do is to bring these things to everybody's attention and get the public interested because the public really isn't interested. When you have voters showing up representing 25% of the potential registered voters to vote on very important issues, and they don't really give a damn about what, so it's left to a few people who show interest. Jerry just gave you an impassioned, uh, or passioned presentation on his uh, review of the uh, Wright Pierce report. The concern that we have, and we would ask that you reconsider this vote that you've taken on this project is that if the elephant in the room is Smutty Nose, and we believe firmly that it's Smutty Nose, then Smutty Nose should be participating with the town financially to solve it and not put it on the backs of the taxpayers to solve it. For $114,000 worth of taxes that they're paying for what we believe is their share of the repair bill here in the first thirteen eight million is uh, over six million, they should be stepping up and paying for that as a good citizen. It's not the responsibility of the average taxpayer who gets enough abuse as it is. So I, and, and I'm gonna speak to this in more detail, uh, repeating a lot of what Jerry said, but I think his points are valid and uh, they should be taken into consideration by this board and the town management held accountable for really presenting good, detailed information and answering all the questions that, that arise. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Nick Bridle, 225 Toll Farm Road in Hampton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Budget Committee. Uh, I wanted to say that it's not very often that we talk about precedent here. We spoke about earlier tonight at the Grist Mill Dam article. But I think that um, precedent is a good thing to set. 
And the rational taxpayers earlier tonight stated that they should have a GoFundMe page for one of the Warren articles, and I think uh, so that would support, directly support the people who do it. And I think that uh, it's not very often I agree with the rational taxpayers of Hampton, but I think that we should consider that for many of these Warren articles. Obviously, I just. I want to say thank you for uh, the Board of Selectmen's recommendation of 4 to 0, and thank you for the Budgets Committee's recommendation for this article. I think it's long overdue, and I think we need to move forward with it. Thank you, Budget okay. Committee. Okay, you're welcome. Is any other comments or questions? Seeing. No. No. Well, less than a minute. Go, go right ahead. Less than a minute. I can't, I can't uh, disagree with that. Chuck said he's timing you. I found my charts here that I was trying to find before. This chart, I, I, which uh, came out of uh, the Wright Pierce uh, a book and has colored lines on it, which made me understand this chart better, shows that the trouble began in March of, or, uh, yeah, of May of 14. And six months, uh, the rest of the year, we had points out of control over the uh, state uh, requirement, the limit of 6,100 pounds a day of BOS. We're above it. In 15, we had eight months of data points over the spec. In 16, we had four out and two very near the spec line, two of them were very, six you might say. 12 and 13, all points were in. Uh, June and July and August rose a bit, but they were still in, occupying. Okay, please wrap it up, Jerry. Yeah, You're and our pre-brewery entry was about 50 to 60 Excuse percent. Excuse me, Mr. Capacity. Chairman, point of order. Yes, sir. What were we just interrupted with? Point of order. Yeah, uh, but uh, the question is, what is this one minute? There is no time limit for public comment at a public hearing. Tim, So Jerry, what is, where is this coming from, Mr. On. Chairman? It's coming from Jerry. Jerry said he wanted a minute, and I said, go ahead. Oh, Mr. Okay. Bean was playing the sand, the, uh, the hourglass, I see. Got Please it. continue if you Thank you, Mr. Bean. Are you finished, Jerry? Yeah, one other thing, Mr. Bean. This is the 17 points. The 17 points are blocked out with a big block saying, hey, this is 14, 15, 16 data. They blocked out all the points in 17 that I went to look at. Thank, Thank you very much, Jerry. Any I make other? a motion that we close public comment on this Warren article. I'll second it. Hold on, hold on. Is there any additional public comment on Article 7? Seeing none, seeing none, I move to this public meeting, Article 8, to be considered read as written. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Mike Plouffe. Any public comment on Article 8? Seeing none, I will move the next article. Article 9, I move to this public meeting to be considered read as written. Do I have a second? Second by, second by Regina. Do I see any public comment questions? Seeing none. You have you. Well, we have uh, a couple people in the audience that are here specifically for some petition warrant articles. Would it be possible to do those first? We're not. We're not going to be reconsidering anything until we finish this public meeting. So, if they, if they, it won't make any difference because we won't be reconsidering. So you'd still have to wait till the end to see what the result is. Okay. Thank you. So, you're welcome. Um, I move to this public meeting, Article 10 to be considered read as written. Do I, seconded by Regina, any public comment, questions? Seeing none. I move to this public meeting, Article 11, to be considered read as written. Do I have a second? Regina Barnes. Any comment, questions? Seeing none. You, you have a comment, question? Thank you. Thank you, Mary Louise. Which we were on Article 10, I believe? Yes. Okay. Um, collective bargaining agreement. Yeah. Collective bargaining agreement. Okay. Any any other questions, comments? 
Seeing none, thank you very much. I will move to this public meeting, Article 11. To be considered read as written, collective bargaining agreement, Super supervisory associa association local 3017. Do I have a second? Regina seconded. Do I have any comments, questions from the public? Seeing none, I move to this public meeting, Article 12, to be considered read as written, which includes collective bargaining for the SEIU Local 1984, AL, AFL-CIO, and CLC. Any questions or comments from this? I see none. Thank you very much. Moving right along. Um, Article 13, I'm moving to this, move to this public meeting, Article 13, to be considered read as written. And this is for a uh, purchase, a Mac cab over truck side loader for uh, $620,000 and to raise an appropriate $124,000. Lease agreement. A five year lease agreement, okay? Do I, any questions, comments about Article 13? Oh, seconded by Regina. Any questions, comments? Seeing none. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Mary Louise, go ahead. I know sometimes I'm invisible. Well, no, I, right. I just couldn't see you oh, the angle, you know? It's hard to see you sometimes. Uh, I have a problem with this article in this context. I think it's time for the Board of Selectmen and Management and the Public Works Department to go over the, uh, the list of all the vehicles and all the accessories. We're carrying over $6 million worth of vehicles and accessories. And after the disastrous purchase of those mechanical packers, uh, I, I think we need a little more time to check on this. And I will tell you very frankly, and I've said it for a number of years, we have got to stop collecting commercial trash on the taxpayer's back. We have got to stop it. And we shouldn't run through our equipment as fast if we can get back to just residential collection. I think it's, I think, if not illegal, it's certainly uh, not a good thing to do for the taxpayers of this community. So I have, a, I have a serious question with this article. Personally, I will vote against it. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, I move to this public hearing. meeting, public hearing, Article 14, to be considered read as written, raise and appropriate the sum of $316,231 for improvements to streets. Any comments? Oh, seconded by Regina. Any comments, questions? Seeing none, I move to this public hearing, Article 15, to be considered read as written, raise and appropriate $300,000 to be added to the Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund. Any questions, comments from the audience? Oh, seconded by Regina, Barbara. Okay, seeing none. Moving right along, move to this public hearing, article number 16, to be considered read as written. It's a list of various charities that um, we contribute to it every year. And any, any um, comments or questions from the public? Oh, seconded by Regina. Seeing none, moving right along. I'll move to this public hearing, Article 17, to be considered read as written. Raisin, shall the town of Hampton raise an appropriate $131,814 for the purposes of Park and Recreation Department for the Kids' Kingdom Playground and to replace tuck field fencing. Any comments, questions, or oh, seconded by Regina, any comments or questions from the audience? No tax impact. Thank you very much, Mary Louise. Um, okay, seeing none, I move to this public hearing, Article Number 18, to be considered read as written, raise and appropriate $120,000 for software, hardware, uh, various services, fire departments, primary dispatch, upgrade, EMS, records reporting software, 
town website hosting services from the unassigned fund balance, seconded by Regina, no tax impact. Any questions, comments from the audience? Seeing none, I will move to this public hearing, Article 19, to be considered read as written. Raise and appropriate $100,000 for the purpose of installing lighting at Hampton Beach on C, D, and F streets. No tax impact. Any questions, comments from the audience? Seeing none. Oh, seconded by Regina. Okay, we already did Article 20. I move to this public hearing Article 21 to be considered read as written. Raise and appropriate $90,000. This is the police forfeiture special revenue fund there is no tax impact anybody want to comment questions i i seconded by regina thank you for keep reminding me about being having a second uh, <laughs> and so seeing no nobody i will move right along to the next move to this public hearing article 22 be to be considered read as written oh i'm sorry we did that one as well i checked it off and here we go all right, thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay, move to this public hearing, Article 23, raise an appropriate 51, oh, to be considered read as written. Uh, raise an appropriate $51,000 for purchasing a utility pickup truck with a plow for the fire department. Uh, any comments, I'll questions? Second oh, seconded by Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. Mm -hmm. And any questions or comments regarding this Utility pickup truck, Jerry Zanoy. Mr. Zanoy. Jerry Zanoy, 16 Presidential Circle in Hampton. You know, fifty-one thousand dollars for a pickup truck with a plow. It's a utility one too. Over the last couple of weeks, Portsmouth Ford has been running specials. Uh, Ford 250, Ford 350 with Fisher plows, 31,000, 32,000. And that's without negotiation. You never pay what they ask, you know that. I mean, this strikes me as the lack of prudence. It's public money, let's spend it. Why don't we think about money like we think about it when we are at home paying our bills? I like the fire chief. He's a good guy. Runs a good ship. The last new car I bought was in 1974. I not only bought it because I needed it. It was a nine-passenger wagon. I had six, four kids at the time and two more coming down the road. So I had it to have it. But looking at what he's using it for, plowing snow and around hydrants and hauling Things, you know, the boat around, so on. There's no reason he has to pay 51000 unless he has a traveling radio station inside. <laughs> Try using a cell phone once in a while inside with somebody. I mean, this is, to me, this is wanton spending. This is over, over, overboard. This should be, you know, I can't say any more. I made my point. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments regarding the Article 23, seeing none, thank you. I move Article 24 to this public hearing to be considered, read as written, raise and appropriate $50,000 50, for the replacement of a yard horse tractor, seconded by Mr. Plouffe. Any comments, questions? Seeing none, we shall move on to Article 25. I move to this public hearing, Article 25, to be considered read as written. Raise and appropriate $50,000 for the maintenance, repair, reconstruction, replacement, making AD compliant landing road sidewalk. Any comments, question? Oh, seconded by Regina. Any, any uh, comments, questions? Mary Louise? Very, very briefly. Yes, um, I, I'm not sure. I may need Mr. Jacob's help on this. The only ADA-compliant sidewalk I'm aware of is the one that goes 
uh, from uh, Five Corners East. Chris, is that? Anybody? Chris? The ADA compliant sidewalk, is that, is that sidewalk? Because I think it's the only one like that in town. My problem is when, when John Muxie's daughter was killed out there on a winter evening, uh, there was a great lobbying by the neighbors, et cetera, and this was a long time ago, uh, to get a sidewalk from Five Corners East, and they did. And the problem is that the sidewalk goes like that and then down and then up and then down. People run in the road, they won't use the sidewalk. So I have a little question in my mind as to whether this is a useful, uh, useful way to spend the money. Thank you very much. Any other questions, comments for Article 25? Seeing none, I move to this public hearing Article 26 to be considered read as written. Um, raise an appropriate 44,662 for the purpose of hiring a full-time town clerk assistant. Any comments, questions? Great. Seconded by um, wow. Regina and by Brian Lapham, okay. And oh, I thought Craig was gonna have some comments or questions for us. No, okay. Fixing the mic, thank you very much. Okay, seeing no comments or questions, I move to this public hearing, Article 27. To be, re to be considered read as written, it's raise an appropriate $21,057 for hiring a part-time paralegal for the town councilor's office, uh, seconded by Regina. Any comments or questions from the audience? Seeing none, I move to this public hearing, Article 28. To be considered read as written, $20,000 to be raised and appropriate to engage the services of a professional, uh, professional to advise the board of uh, the, the board and the town about creating a. Um, Sewer Enterprise Fund. That's the essence of this. Seconded by Regina. Any uh, comments or questions? Seeing none, we shall move right on to Article 29. I move this Article 29 to be considered read as written. Raise and appropriate $20,000 for the Hampton Conservation Fund. Seconded by Regina. Any comments, questions? Seeing none, I will move to this public hearing, Article 30, to be considered read as written. Raise and appropriate $20,000 for maintenance to the town, the town's historic blacksmith shop. No tax impact. Any questions, comments? Seeing none, thank you. Oh, seconded by Regina. All right, now, moving along, move this, move to this public hearing, Article 31, to be considered read as written. Raise and appropriate $15,000 to replace exterior doors to the town of, office. the town office building. Second. Seconded by Chuck Rage. Any comments or questions? Seeing none. I move to this public hearing, Article 32, to be considered read as written, um, raise an appropriate $10,000 for a hazardous waste collection day, seconded by Regina. Any comments, questions, seeing none, I move to this public hearing article, let's see, 20, 33 is not a money article. 41. 41, thank you, Mr. Jones. All right, 41. Okay, I move to this public hearing, Article 41, to be considered read as written, petition to raise $3,000 for the 2018 Christmas Parade. Any questions or comments? Oh, seconded by Regina. Any questions or comments for Article 41? Seeing none. Thank you very much. Uh, let's 45. see here. 45, thank you, Tim. 
We are moving along now, folks. Okay. Move to this public hearing, Article 45. 45, right? Yeah. Okay. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I haven't finished even... Okay. I'm moving this Article 45 to this public hearing to be considered read as written. It is to raise an appropriate $520,000 for a six-foot sidewalk west of Mace Road, seconded by Regina Barnes. Any public comment, questions, and yes, we do. Step right up to the microphone, please, and introduce yourself. Yep. My name is Megan Riley, and I, I'm on uh, 14 Toby Street, and I am the one who submitted this uh, article. <coughs> <coughs> So thanks for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, I submitted this this article for the sidewalk on Mace Road, and I feel the construction of a sidewalk on Mace would be a great addition to Hampton's active community. We um, it won't won't only provide a safe option for children walking to and from school, but also to friends' houses, our runners, and those walking their dogs. We have a beautiful playground that Parks and Rec put together. Um, they built over on five corners. And many of the uh, residents don't feel safe walking down to that park. They would rather drive or drive somewhere else than to walk their children in a wagon, stroller, or even just walk down the street, myself included. Um, <clears throat> this sidewalk isn't just a standalone sidewalk. It would connect High Street and also Mill Road, so it would create a perimeter for children going to school over there. Um, and yes, I understand it's an investment, I recognize there's a lot on the ballot this year. Um, and of course, other folks will want sidewalks as well. I know you guys mentioned that the other night. Uh, Jen and her team, Jennifer and her team at DPW, are working extremely hard uh, to accomplish their projects that they already have and that they're working to ensure the safety of our residents. I submitted this as a supplement to that work. As we all know, drivers are extremely distracted. They drive way too fast. And at this point, we can't keep pushing off this until something tragic happens in order for us to do construction on Mace Road or for other sidewalks. Our children and residents deserve better than that. And I'm hopeful that the committee and the community will support this article. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have a question. Where yes, did Jenny. you get the $520,000 figure? Yeah. I worked with um, Jennifer and her team, and they put together the estimate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Who was the second for you? Uh, Regina Bonds. Okay. All right. Um, I move to this public hearing, Article 46, to be considered read as written. It's a petition warrant article to raise $50,000 to remove or trim dead trees in the cemetery. Any Anybody want to comment or question? I seconded by Regina. I see no comments or questions, so we shall move right to 49. Article 49, which happens to be the last article. Um, so I move to this public hearing, Article 49, to be considered read as written. And it is a petition warrant article to raise an appropriate $7,000 to support One Sky Community Services. Is there anybody here that would like to, oh, seconded by Regina, is there anybody here that would like to comment or have any questions? Please come to the podium. Thank you, sir. And Chris Munns, 5 Nersessian Way in Hampton. Um, I have some uh, handouts that I'll just pass down. So first of all, I want to thank you very much for your service, your uh, your patience and your uh, due diligence with our tax dollars. I, uh, I appreciate it. I'll do, I'll do my best to be very brief. I'm here not only as a uh, resident of Hampton, but I'm the uh, chief executive officer of One Sky Community Services. Um, and I'm sure some of you, have, probably most of you, are wondering who or what is One Sky Community Services. Uh, and hopefully I can answer that question for you tonight. Uh, One Sky is a private nonprofit New Hampshire corporation that has been providing supports and services to individuals with developmental disabilities 
and acquired brain disorders to residents of Hampton and elsewhere throughout Rockingham County since 1983. If you know somebody who was born with Down syndrome who, or who has autism or has a brain injury as a result of an accident, chances are that we have been working, them, working with them for many years. Our focus is to help individuals we serve achieve the same things all of us want, a safe and secure place to live, a loving and caring relationship with at least one special person, and the chance to pursue their professional and personal goals as a member of our community. Through our contract with the state of New Hampshire, we are the agency designated to provide state and federally funded Medicaid services to eligible individuals and families living in the 24 cities and towns in Rockingham County we cover. Hampton is one of those communities, and we currently provide supports and services to about 70 individuals and families living in our community. Anyone who lives in our town who has a developmental disability or an acquired brain disorder or has a family member they may suspect has such a disability or disorder must contact us in order to qualify for Medicaid assistance. In total, we, re we receive about $25 million from the state of New Hampshire to help fulfill the state's obligation or the state's commitment to the people we serve. Now, I realize that sounds like a lot of money, <clears throat> and we're very grateful for that support. But we currently serve about 1,000 individuals and families across 24 cities and towns in our service area. One million dollars of that goes directly to the people that we are serving in Hampton right now. That funding enables us to provide a range of services, including early intervention supports to families of young children, working with our local school districts to assist children um, between the ages of 3 and 21, and assisting individuals over the age of 21 develop a service plan and implement a service plan to meet their needs in a community-based setting. Unfortunately, this, the funding we receive from the state has not kept up with the growing demand for services or the rate of inflation. Individuals we serve are living longer. The mortality rate among high-risk newborns has declined, which I think everybody agrees is fabulous but it means that more children are entering life with additional special challenges. Since, 20, since 2005, the incidence of autism has increased by 11% per year, and overall the number of people receiving services from us has increased by 58% between 2006 and 2015, and in that period we have received no adjustment in the rates that uh, the state has paid us for the services that we are supposed to provide. So the money we're receiving doesn't go as far to help us help the people and families we serve as it used to. In addition, the lion's share of the money that we receive is a direct pass-through from Medicaid directly to cover very specific supports and services to individuals and their families. It does not cover a number of things that, when available, add significantly to the overall quality of our clients' lives. Things like real and meaningful employment training and long-term supports, solutions to the transportation challenges that uh, most of our clients are facing trying to get from their home to their job if we are able to find them one. A real big one is dental services. Most people don't realize that Medicaid does not cover dental services. Um, and I can tell you if you come to one of our events, you will see firsthand what that means to the people that we are supporting. Um, it also doesn't cover things like gas, food, and home heating vouchers, educational camp scholarships, and what I like to refer to as life enrichment opportunities that the rest of us enjoy, like going to the movies, a play, or, or things like that that we can enjoy. To help address that gap, which is not funded by the state, we created the One Sky Readiness Fund, a description of which is included in the report I, left, I, I gave you. The Readiness Fund was created last year, and in our first year, we raised over $25,000 from individual and local business contributions. The money we raised is used to directly benefit the individuals we serve, and we allocate the money based on need. This past year, we purchased a shed for an individual who would have been evicted from their home if we had not purchased the shed. We've used it to provide, literally provide someone with food that they didn't have when they needed it. We're in the process of evaluating a proposal to build, to rebuild a ramp into someone's home so that they can continue to live there. After reaching out to the individual and business community, we're now reaching out to each of the towns and cities in our service area to ask each town to make a small $100 per person uh, donation 
uh, towards our efforts so that we can provide those extra supports that will improve the overall quality of life for the people we serve. We've reached out to all of the towns in our area. Last night I was in Epping speaking to their budget committee, and we asked them for $6,800. Based on the seven people from Hampton we're currently serving, our request this year from the town of Hampton is $7,000. I'd like to thank everybody that signed the petition. Um, I understand in your meeting on Tuesday that you voted not to recommend our petition. Uh, not only do I hope that maybe I've changed your mind tonight, but that the voters will approve it at the town meeting in March. And if so, hopefully this can be the start of an ongoing partnership between One Sky and the town. Thanks again for all your service, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yes. Thanks for coming in, Chris. Sure. Um, you mentioned in your uh, presentation that my microphone went dead. Is this like a, a habit? How's this one? Not working. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello, okay. Um, sorry. You mentioned that in order to get Medicaid, people have to, have to go through you? Yes. How, how, does it, how does that come to be? Is that written in law or what? Yeah, there's a, there's a statute that was my, – now my microphone went um, I'll talk loud. Um, there's, a, there's a statute, I think it's, uh, it's RSA 171, that was passed by the legislature in the – Mid to, eight, mid to late eight, 1980s, they created what's called the Area Agency System. And there are 10 area agencies. We are one of those 10. Uh, each, each area agency covers a geographic area of the state. And that, what, what, what that legislation did was it, it made us the entry point for people into the system. We do the eligibility determination. We prepare a service plan for the individual. We work with them to get the money from the state, and then an individual budget gets assigned to each individual from the state. So there's a, they each have an individual budget. Those budgets can range from a couple thousand up to multiple hundreds of thousands, depending on the need. And then we work with the family to find somebody to actually provide the supports. Okay, so each area has a single entity, such as yourself, that yes. has a monopoly on getting people on board or off board Medicaid? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, hold on, hold on. Sounds like any, the sounds like the regional planning commission scheme, the same kind of thing, huh? Broken up into areas and yeah. Most most states in the country will have the function that we do handled by a state agency. New Hampshire chose to uh, enter into a private public partnership. I was looking over your. I assume because of this, just like the RPCs, then you would be subject. Your organization would be subject to RSA 91A. Uh, Requirements, correct? Um, I'm not sure. I don't. I don't believe that we are, because we are. We're not a state agency. We're a private. Neither is the RPC. Just so you know, uh, there has been court rulings on that. If you get most of your money from the government, you are subject to 91A. I know so. we're subject. I know we're subject to a whole raft of <laughs> That's regulations. That's one of them. So. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I, I was looking at your expenses, and I see you got something called service coordination. Uh, under uh, under program services, okay. is that where is that where payroll is located? Tim, hold on. What? Hold on. Okay. This is the public hearing. Are you finished with your presentation? Because if we're going to do questions and stuff, I'm going to have this reconsidered. So then you can have all you can have all the questions back and forth that you want. We didn't have a chance to interview him before, but. This part of the public hearing is for the comments and questions from the people in the audience and not to have a general discussion from every, every member here. So for that reason, are you finished? I'm done. You're finished. Okay. At this time, at 9.09 .09 p.m., I am closing this public hearing to the public. Yes, sir. You can make a motion to reconsider no, article. No, not in the majority. Okay, you weren't in the majority, so no, you can't. However, I was in the majority, and I'm going to make a motion to reconsider Article 49. Do I have a second from somebody that was in the majority? By Danielle, seconded by Danielle, okay? Now, we are going to vote on whether we should reconsider this, okay? That's the vote right now. So raise your hand if you wish to reconsider this warrant article. And we have 
Steve Henderson, Sonny, Chuck Rage, um, Regina. It's, a, it's, it's, it's getting late, you know. Steve LeBranch, uh, Mike Pluff, Danielle, and David, and also Ginny. And those opposed would be Brian Lapham, and those abstaining would be me. Would be Tim Jones. Okay, <coughs> by invitation. Um, okay, now discussion for Chris and I. We we can discuss back and. <coughs> oh, Brian was just fixing the uh, fixing the microphone. If you would, yeah, Chris, um, I want to say that I. First of all, if we had had this book, if if we had had you at our meeting, but if we had this book, we had no information. <laughs> And I also want to mention that I don't know why it was an 11th hour petition warrant article um, because we didn't get this until the very, very last minute, and then we had no information. It. And, you know, I, I looked at the list of, uh, of all of the other people that we contribute to, and my first thought was during the day today, okay, what's the mission statement of One Sky? And you just told us what the mission statement is. You clearly told us what the need is. You clearly told us how there are 70 people, and you have gone to each of the towns in your area and asked for $100 for each of the people. Yes. And I think you covered it very well. I, I want to tell you that I plan to vote for this now, but um, besides myself talking, anybody else... Tim, would you like to speak on this now? No, I've been interrupted enough tonight. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, anybody else like to speak on this particular? Call for the vote. Oh, call for the vote. This is to, to vote to reconsider, correct? Have we already done that? Yeah. yeah. This, yeah. Is, this is the vote. Call, call for the vote to? You may need to make this vote now. Yeah. Okay. So to reconsider. No, we've already reconsidered. Exactly. Okay. Now we're making the vote to whether we recommend or not, right. correct? Right. Okay. It's getting late. All right. Let's go. Those, raise your hand if you... Who was the second? Was it Regina? Sonny. Sonny was the second. Okay. So those in favor of um, recommending this would be Steve Henderson, Sonny, Chuck Rage, Steve LeBranch, Mike Pluff, Danielle, David, and also Ginny. Those opposed would be... Uh, Brian and those abstaining would be Tim, jo Tim Jones and Regina. Thank you very much. Thank would, you very much. Would, thank you very much, Chris, for coming in. Would anybody like, on this committee, would anybody like to reconsider any other warrant articles? Yeah, I want to reconsider the sidewalk one. Okay, Danielle, uh, what number is that, please? I have one question. Yes, sir. The, the I would second that. Excuse me? The they have already been repaired? Yeah. They want to, they've been repaired, but they want to replace they them, Sonny, the, with new yeah, ones, okay? Yeah. Right, they want to replace them with brand new ones. So that's why we're done We're done repairing those. Okay, that, I'm sorry, Danielle, yes. Danielle, so you want to make a motion to reconsider Article 45. Yeah, 45, and I seconded. Seconded by Ginny. Okay. Those individuals, those I did. Motion made by Danielle to reconsider, seconded by Ginny. Any discussion on the Mr. reconsider? Chairman, point of order. Yes, sir. I, I know that Ginny did not vote in the majority on this. I didn't vote. Because she wasn't there. Wasn't right. There. Therefore, she doesn't qualify as having voted in the majority. That is true, which means that she cannot second it. So we need somebody else. And I don't know about Danielle's vote. Danielle, did you vote? Well, it was nine and one abstention. So did you vote? Oh, so it was Regina abstained, so Danielle voted. And I will second it because I voted against it, okay? So we are, any, any discussion about the reconsideration? All those in favor of reconsidering, please raise your hand. We have on, Danielle, we have Jenny, we have Steve LeBranch, we I'm have supporting your, your, your Regina uh, vote and me. Chuck. When I any, all those opposed to reconsidering this would be oh, Brian, yeah. Steve Henderson. I'm in the yay as well. All right, we'll take yeah. the vote again. This is to vote to reconsider. 
I am in the yea also. So, this is for the this is for the construction of a uh, on Mace Road, a sidewalk. Okay, a, that was a petition warrant article. All right, so we have a, a motion by Danielle, seconded by Steve LeBranch, to reconsider. All those in favor of reconsidering, please raise your hand. What? Sorry. Jenny. Yes, I am reconsidering. Da uh, Tim Jones, who's not raising his hand. Danielle, Steve LeBranch, uh, Regina, Chuck. Organization to help me. That's one, two, three. Was that six? Yes. Okay, so those opposed. I know, it's getting late. I was in favor. For reconsideration of Article 45, which is a petition article for Mace Road Sidewalk, it was a uh, motion by Danielle, seconded by seconded by Steve LeBranch. Those in favor was Ginny, uh, from my memory, Tim, Danielle, Steve LeBranch, uh, Regina, Chuck Rage, and, and that was it, right? Okay, so now those opposed to this reconsideration would be Steve Henderson, uh, Brian Lapham, Sonny Kravitz. What is the motion, Mr. Michael, Chairman? this is to reconsider. Reconsider. How many times are you going to vote for that? Vote we for haven't four. finished vote with again. the nays. So, again, the nays. One, two, Brian, Steve Henderson, Sonny, um, Dave, and also Mike. Okay, so you have five nays, no abstentions. So we will reconsider this. Now, um, motion to... Are you going to make a motion now, Danielle, to recommend? Yes. Okay, Can that's I what I thought. And it's seconded Thank by you. Ginny. Okay, did you get that? Barbara. Motion to recommend Article 45 by Danielle Augustine, seconded by Ginny. And we any discussion on this particular um, on this particular recommendation? I want to I want to say that. We talked about this on Tuesday night, and and Mr. Welch was very kind to go through the figures, um, all of the amounts that would be necessary to do this job for five hundred and twenty thousand dollars. However, when I asked, "Where's the six feet coming from?" And it, we have a road that's approximately 25 feet wide. It's not coming out of the road, I was told, because if it is, then Mace Road will have to be turned into a one-way street. So that's what I was told. Now, that, so then I asked, all right, where will the land come from? And if it's going to come from um, taking eminent domain, then it's this, this figure of $520,000 doesn't, address the cost of taking land by eminent domain. So um, that's, that's my comment, this board. Anybody have anything to say about this particular discussion about the... Um, so you're saying the 520 is not correct? The 520 is the amount that... We're, you were at our meeting on Tuesday night, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Mr. Welch read... Uh, so many feet of, uh, of granite curbing, $100,000, so many feet of hot top, X amount of money, on and on and on. And this is, we're not, we're no longer in a public hearing, okay? So, well, but he went through, but the, it didn't, he didn't list legal fees. He didn't list acquiring land, okay, by eminent domain. And what was talked about is that it, ADA compliant, it has to be six feet wide, and you have, you don't have an especially wide road there, okay? And so basically my question on Tuesday night was, where's the land coming from? And it was basically eminent domain. And if that's the case, I know that if somebody said, can I take six feet of your front of your, um, of your land, I would probably say, well, you're going to have to pay me for it. Um, and even then, I don't know if I'd want, I wouldn't be very happy, but... Um, Okay, Chuck. Can we ask Fred about the land? Is, is that something we can ask? The public hearing is closed. But he's not a public. He's not, he's a, not a he's public person. Town employee. Is it town he's employee? If he right away, which is outside. Wait a minute. Hold, hold on. Hold on. Okay, we have we have a committee member asking if if we can. Are you making a motion 
to. We have. Let me see. We have a motion. We have a motion on the floor right now, correct? Okay. And that's to reconsider this, to re recommend it. Now, right. well, is the informed of, some, of of what is the will of this a statement that you right. might not know? Oh, I know. I was there. Okay, I was there and asked the questions. I, <laughs> what I just stated, read, if you watch the video, you'll see it's exactly the way I just said it. Okay, now. I realize that it's just exactly the way that you probably said it, Steve. It, And it is, and you weren't there, Jenny. I know, the but okay. can we ask to reaffirm your statement because we don't have the videotape here. And I? for us that weren't there, can we also have Fred Welch, who is our town manager, to confirm that as well? Okay. Just to relieve any doubt in okay. anyone's mind. Okay. I am very pleased to ask Mr. Welch if he'd like to come up and address this. If the rest of, if that's yeah. the will of this board, is that the will of this board? Do we have a little bit of a yes. consensus here? I have no objection if the purpose of him speaking is simply to confirm or disaffirm your statement. Thank you. Would you like to come up and speak to this, uh, Mr. Welch, please? Because perhaps uh, information has changed. I only can go by what I was told. I don't know about the width of the roads and how wide they have to be and anything else. I'm only going, and I'm doing this, I'm doing this, Megan, for you, because this, these are, this is the very thing that came up the other night, okay? So, Mr. Welch, please. In answer to your question, Mr. Chairman, there is no provision in this warrant article to take anything by eminent domain. Therefore, if it's not there, it can't be done, and the entire sidewalk will be constructed within the existing 50-foot right-of-way of the road. Thank you very much, Mr. Town Manager. Okay, so now we have Sonny that would like to make a comment. I mean, I'm, I'm not opposed to it, but I mean, I think there's a process. Go to the deep, go to the DP level. They'll put you on the list. If we start making exceptions for each per, each area that wants sidewalks, we're gonna start getting warrant articles for a sidewalk on this street, a sidewalk over there, fix this sidewalk. There's a process for the town. Work with the DPW. We're not opposed to. Okay. Thank you, Sonny. Anything else, Sonny? No. no. Um, Steve Henderson, please. You know, I agree with, uh, you know, it would be a great asset to have a sidewalk there as, long as well as several other areas in town that are uh, dangerous and we could use sidewalks. The issue comes back is, one, it should, I believe, it should have gone through uh, public works and should be presented by them. Two, we have to make a decision, like Fred told us the other night, uh, town manager, that we have to go from the roadway in six feet. That's what he said the other night to us. Well, if we're going to take six feet in, I took a ride over there and I checked out Mace Road. We're talking trees, we're talking walls, we're talking a lot of people's property. I mean, we're coming right up close to our property. There's several of them. We're going to be almost to their porches. So, therefore, I think we just need more information. We need more things done. I mean, you can't, we can't make Mace Road a one-way one road. That's not going to happen. So, therefore, if we go by what the uh, ADA compliances are, and we have to go by the six feet, and Fred said the other day we'd start from the town property in, I just don't see where at this point, at this stage of the game, uh, we're ready to go forward with this. Do I believe it's a great a great cause? Absolutely. Do I believe that it's good for the children, good for the people going down to the park and the schools? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But we're not at the point uh, where we can uh, push this forward at this point. That's Thank you very much, Mr. State. Henderson. Anybody else have any comments or questions regarding? I, I just have one quick comment. Yes, Chuck. I mean, we spent all this money on a new playground, and if people don't use it, it's, it seems to be a complete waste. So I, 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 I think more people would use it if it was uh, accessible. I wouldn't let my kids walk down there. Any other, any other, Mr. all right, all right, quiet, please. Comment. Mr. Chairman. Quiet from the uh, Mr. audience, Chairman. please. Go ahead, uh, Tim. I would, I would observe through uh, Chuck, our occasional VD representative, that uh, if in fact there's no safe way for people to get to the park, then the placement of that park, which was just recently done, was ill-considered with regard to the public benefit and health. Any, are you finished, Mr. Jones? I might not be. It's not just about the park on the road. It's about the fact that it's unsafe to walk on there right now. That's hold on, all. hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's 
make sure that we are recognized. Danielle, yeah. you had something to say? <laughs> I did. Okay. So it's, it's about safety and the fact that right now it can be very dangerous just to walk on that road with how badly people speed and the motorcycles constantly. That's the issue, and maybe we don't have a perfect solution right now, but I just definitely wanted to reconsider. Thank you very much. And any, uh, David, you wish to say something? I completely agree in the fact that we need a lot more sidewalks in Hampton, but in the past year, a number of sidewalks have been proposed. I do think we need to have a master plan on sidewalks, where they belong, where the, the most important ones are, and the areas that require the safest and come to that sort of an agreement. But we seem to be doing it hodgepodgey. And any time somebody, I, I love, matter of fact, I came from Watertown, Massachusetts. There was a sidewalk on each side of the road through the entire town of 40,000 people. So when you come out here, it's kind of, oops, where's the sidewalks? Mm. Um, but the bottom line is I believe in the sidewalks. I believe in what... Uh, what Danielle just said, at the same time, it's also a police matter. If this motorcycle speeding up and down that road, is in this car speeding up down that road, the police department should be monitoring more roads. That would be one of my suggestions. The other one would be, which they did put on next to the road very recently, which I like. They put a speed light up. And you know what? It really does slow down the traffic. Because when I say, oh, I was doing 31, I should be doing 30. Or I'm doing 59, and I should be doing 30, whatever. But I find they do help. That that might be a suggestion for the road for safety. Uh, but if you did make it one way, I was saying at the end, then if it's just one way, then those motorcycles are going to use for a personal strip. So that's not going to solve the problem. So if if we could come up with a plan working to get the proper sidewalks in the most needed areas and make it a 10-year plan so we eventually have sidewalks everywhere, that I think that's the way to go. Thank you very much, Thank David. You. Anybody else have any? Uh, Brian, please. Um, I agree with everything, most of everything Dave had to say. Um, we spent months, many months, um, going over the beach where they do have the sidewalks. They are ADA compliant. But to do all the sidewalks in town would be unbelievable. So I cannot authorize this. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Anybody else on this committee have any additional comments to make? Seeing none. Those in favor of recommending this warrant article, please raise your hands. We have Chuck Rage, we have Regina, we have Danielle. Those opposed to recommending it. We have Ginny, we have uh, Tim, David, Mike, uh, Sonny, Steve Henderson, Brian Lapham, and Stephen LaBranche. And so that means that there are no uh, abstentions. Okay. Correct? Okay. So you have those numbers. Barbara, could you repeat them, please? So we have how many? Four? We have three in favor. Three. And then eight opposed. Eight opposed, zero abstentions. Okay. Thank you very much. The, um, does anybody wish to reconsider? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, before we go any further, I want to point out that when we have a not recommended on this, uh, it, it seems to me that the tally is kind of backwards. So while right now we voted in a negative to recommend, that means we not recommended. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to tell you how it's going to be done, okay? So this is how we're going to do it. When you see the three numbers after recommend or not recommend, the first number is those that recommended it. The second number is those that did not recommend it. And the third number is the abstentions. So if it says not recommended, 091, that means 
Nobody recommended it. Nine people did not, and one abstained. So in the revote that we just did, it is three that recommended, eight that did not recommend it, and zero abstentions. And to change that in any way, Tim, doing double negatives and everything else is going to make it extremely confusing. So that's the system that we're going to stick with. Thank you for, the, for the mentioning that, though, so that we could clarify that for everyone going into the future. Now, any other, anybody else have anything to reconsider? Seeing none, I adjourn the, oh, I'll, I'll accept a motion right. to. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Tim, I have a, a motion to adjourn from Regina. Do I have a second? By Steve Henderson, all those in favor, raise your hands. And we have everyone, it, David, are you going to vote, Danielle? I'm voting with my feet. Okay, and Tim Jones is voting by his feet, just for the record. Those opposed? None. No abstentions. So 10 people voted to the time, 931. Thank you very much, Channel 22. Thank you, public.